we're talking about um, photographic series. In every yeah. in every case, like we mentioned ACD, we mentioned ortho, you need to take different series. ACD, you need to take 12 photos right. before and after. For other, you need to take different um, series. And in this case, this is a general series. Yeah, it is. Just a general good all around series. Take full face picture. Uh, the part I would redo on this one, I, I took this one, is I, I would not cut their head off mm -hmm. and do not make it vertical, but just the same. You've got full face, which is very important. Uh, you've got a natural smile. You've got retracted anterior, uh, upper, lower occlusal, mm -hmm. and the buccal corridors, all, uh, those were shot with mirrors. That's just a not good all around series. So Dennis, let's start with the first photo that, that we take in the series. And yes. That's always going to be the portrait photos. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to take a photo of the full face. Usually what I do, and there are different theories, I frame it from the end of the head, yes. end of the hair in this case, to the chin of the person. Some people include the shoulders a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. But most important in the portrait is the background. Yeah, I think that's, that's very, very important. But also, you know, um, in the series, we would take this first. And there's a reason for that. What's the reason? The reason is, later on, we're going to put cheek retractors in. And the cheek retractors could cause a little red mark. So we want to take the portrait picture oh, first. Oh, OK. OK. You want to take it first because yeah. Then they're still smiling, right? Right. And what you, what you want to avoid, and you've seen pictures taken in the dental chair, many of you have, and they're just not attractive. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very simple. This is just gray foam board that I got, I think it's Staples. Very inexpensive. Just slide it right behind the head of the patient. It looks great. Uh, another trick that I've learned or another technique would be actually to get, say, a monochromatic uh, uh, towel of some sort, mm -hmm. but just make sure it's more neutral gray. And you can have the patient kind of sit sideways on the dental chair, have someone drape the uh, cloth behind them, and that's even better than this type of picture. So those are a few hints that you it's can It's a good do. point. I wanted to ask you, does the color matter of the background? Yeah. Look at this picture here. Absolutely. It is yellow, and you can actually see how it changes the image, how it changes yeah. how we um, recognize the whole face, how we recognize exactly. the whole color. So it, it washes everything out. We don't see a contrast so much. Exactly. And, and we want, certainly in this picture, we want all of the attention to be on the model, mm -hmm. not that bright color in the background. So for those of you that are, have painted walls and whatever color it may, might be, uh, you might want to consider getting a, a gray foam board or some cloth put on your wall, or you can take it off and on, because you want a nice backdrop. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly not what you would want uh, this example with the yellow background, right? Exactly. So if, if you look at this photo, right. and this is for an ortho series. Yeah, orthodontics, mm -hmm. side view. So you want to take an ortho, but something is wrong here. Something is irritating me. What is that? Well, what's irritating you is uh, along her side view, it's going to be that ugly dark shadow. Yes, right. now that you say it, it's a what do you do about this? Well, we, we have a few tricks that we do. We just hang the patient upside down and we take a picture that way. See, Karsten and you. And she's still <laughs> smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't do that. Uh, actually, this is just a little, uh, little hint I learned actually from someone else, although I'll take credit for it. So normally, uh, this is from a, a compact camera, and the flash is usually on the photographer's left, causing the shadow on the right. Uh, very simply, I just held the camera upside down, okay. okay, took the picture. Now there is shadow is still there, okay, on the back of the head, but it's not so glaring and it's not gonna cause you to say, oh, this is a bad picture or mm -hmm. disturb you as far as uh, looking at what you want to look at in the picture. Yeah, it's a neat trick, so if you compare it compare side to side, nose to nose, you can see that on the left side you have this harsh shadow, and the left side yeah. you have a shadow on the head, but not where the face is. Right. It took away most of it. So it's a better mm -hmm. picture, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned the black background. Here in this photo you can see you put the cardboard there. You have the patient yes. sit there. Usually what I take, I take the patient against the gray wall. And yes. again, I mentioned I have a stand up against the wall with a hat against the 
with their camera, with their phone with, on their with, head. With, with a phone on their head. <laughs> it's a good trick, I tell you. They don't move. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then, I don't know if you're serious. You are serious. I'm serious. Yeah, really? I'm serious. All right. Especially right. if you take photos. If you take photos, we haven't talked about it so much. If you take photos um, for digital smile design. Okay. okay. You want to take a photo with a natural smile like this, where you can see. You also want to also want to take a retracted photo. Right. Retracted photo. And later in the software, you're going to align those. Yes. So what do you do that the patient doesn't move? Because they need to be aligned. And if it's a little bit like this, a little bit like that, uh, yeah. you cannot match them up for digital right. smile design. So that's a good point. Put a head, uh, put a phone on the head. They don't move. Uh, I'd like it. I'll, I'll use that idea. Natural, natural, natural smile. Right. Natural smile photos is a smile where the patient is smiling naturally as broad as they can. Yes. Broad mm -hmm. as they can. So not, not fake, not um, open the mouth. The, the teeth are still in occlusion and, and, and you smile as broad as you can. Right. So you want the line of occlusion just straight across mm -hmm. and you try to avoid a grimace. You know, something like that. Uh, one of the little tricks that I do to try to get them just to do a natural smile is I just kind of say laugh a little bit. And if you laugh, the commissure goes up <laughs> and you laugh as opposed to a, a grimace. So you try to get a natural smile yeah. and you try to find that midline, which is not always easy. Right? So what you focus on, you focus on the incisal edges. The horizontal line should be following the incisal edges of the upper teeth. Exactly. And the midline of the photos should actually be the facial midline, which you can determine on the filtrum. This exactly. Little, it's a little filtrum As here. As you can see here in the picture. So right. you, have a, you have a dental midline, right. which is a midline between eight and nine, and you have a facial midline, okay. which goes from your eyes, over your nose, okay. through your filtrum, to your little chin um, dimple there. That is your facial midline. Okay. And if you combine these both lines, you can determine if you need a midline shift. Okay, where the the guidelines for uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing that if it's a uh, full mouth case or yeah. something where that's affected, right? Exactly, or, or, or full upper case. And focus on the filtrum, right. on the middle of the filtrum, don't focus on the shifted midline of the teeth. Okay. Okay? If we take retractive anterior photos, we take the retractors, mm -hmm. the metal retractors that you mentioned before, and what's the trick here? Mm -hmm. uh, for the anterior picture uh, that we have here, aesthetically, the, the, the plastic ones that are like in a half moon are going to be more attractive, but you're, you're trying not to have the retractors in the picture, but just the same. Uh, use the, uh, the plastic uh, type of retractors, uh, retract out and, and toward you, uh, kind of like a, a blowfish, kind of like that, and uh, that way you have access for the camera to be able to see inside of the uh, mm -hmm. inside the mouth. It lights everything up evenly. Now, the important thing on this picture is the focus point. No matter what camera you're using, uh, manually uh, or, or if the camera focuses itself, the focus point goes halfway back, and you take advantage of your depth of field. We've talked about that several times. So you want everything uh, posterior to be in focus and anterior. So it's midway back. That's your focus point. And uh, then you make the picture that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good point. Again, you want to focus on the incisal edge for your midline in the photo. And you focus that you have a nice composition in this photo. We yes. talked about composition. That means you want to see the last molars exactly evenly on both sides you don't want to see so much of the face you want to see exactly. as much gingival as possible especially yes. in, in acd photos they look at that you see as much gingival yes. in the photo as possible to determine any inflammations exactly and uh, that, that's a very very good mm -hmm. point now one small thing but, but if you go back again Ideally, uh, for the retracted anterior picture, you want the incisal edges to be slightly apart, 
And uh, we didn't do that here. I wish I could redo that picture. And that way uh, you can see the shape of the incisal edges a little bit better and yeah. uh, translucency may come through a little bit better. That, that depends so, to the series you take. Oh, depends so, on the series, so, right. so if you would take, for example, ACD, right. you would take um, oh, we, we track this together. like this okay. in occlusion and in slightly occlusion. apart later right. in another photo because right. you need to take 12. For different series, you're absolutely reasons. right. You want to have it slightly apart to see the translucency and the, right. the incisal edges. Right. Now, Dennis, let's talk about the upper occlusal okay. photography photo. That's a little bit more tricky, I believe, because now some mirrors come into play. Right, a couple things is, um, especially with a compact camera, you, you need to put the patient supine, not necessarily on the SLR camera. So I'm using a compact camera, the patient is supine. What does supine mean? Uh, laying down. Okay. So put the back of the chair down, so you're la laying down. And you notice on the upper occlusal picture, the body position is at the 12 o'clock uh, that way. If you don't do it that way, Karsten, then what happens is there's a shadow on the soft, uh, on the soft palette. So mm -hmm. we go on the upper occlusal picture uh, from the head of the picture. And um, then we want to look at the focus points, mm -hmm. okay? Because if you're letting your camera focus, it's on the midline of the palatal vault, as you can see there. If you try to take a picture that way, oftentimes uh, it'll be blurry for two reasons. One is, there's not enough contrast in the palette. And the, the, all these cameras, when they focus automatically, it's the camera that focuses. So the technique would be, first you get farther or closer and you have your mirror in the mouth, the distance and the angulation that you want. Number two, what you do is you go to the left or the right, so that focus box on the back of your camera is on a, on a biting surface of the tooth, as you can see here. You push down halfway you lock the focus in, many of you know what that is, you lock the focus in, then you pivot back, uh, you pivot back, and then you can take the picture. Mm -hmm. So that would be the technique that you would use with a mirrored picture up occlusal. So you insert the retractors, you insert the right. mirror. Right. In what kind of angle do you hold the mirror? That's a good, a good point. The attempt is, say the upper occlusal, you would lay the mirror on the lower teeth, on the occlusal surface of the okay. lower teeth. The goal is, the mirror is 45 degrees, uh, 45 degrees to the teeth, then the camera is at 45 degrees, 45 and 45 would be 90, mm -hmm. so certainly the goal would be just uh, occlusal as much as you can, and that would be the outcome, that's the goal. You can't always achieve it, but that's what you try to do. Are you standing when you take the photos behind of the patient or in front of the patient? I'm standing again at the 12 o'clock position behind the patient. At the 12 o'clock be be behind the patient, yes. the mirror lying onto the lower teeth and yes. you're taking a photo of the upper. Most important in this photo is that A, you don't see any retractors, B, yes. you don't see the nose, Yes. Um, good point. you see as much as possible of the second molar. And this photo, to my opinion, and, and for ACD, it's a little bit too much angle. So I would angle a little bit more forward that I can see not so much yeah. about the um, label surface because what this photo is, is concentrating on is on the facial Embrasures. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to you want to capture this one in, in this photo. That's a good point. Um, when you take now the photo of the lower um, occlusal, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. So you're holding the mirror differently in this one, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in this photo, you place the mirror where, Dennis? Okay. The mirror would be on the on the uh, be, be the opposite of the lower, so it'd be kind of touching the, the upper teeth. Mm -hmm. You try to get your, your hand out of the way, as you can, as you okay. can see, uh, the way I, I grip the mirror. Um, again, now the retractors, uh, think of the retractors of forming like a frown uh, on, the, on the lower occlusal, like this, and then out. So you want the lower lip, ideally, to be away from the lower incisors. Mm -hmm. So that way you just uh, see the teeth. So again, retractors a little bit like this, 
and then, uh, and then out so that the lip is off the lower incisor. So that's the goal of this yeah. picture. Most people that do a big mistake, what I noticed with retractors, they, they think retractors retract and they pull it as much as they can, right? right. And, and then the, it starts to hurt a little bit. But the trick is actually don't pull it so much, loosen it up and yes. pull out what you mentioned. Pull out and this way you get a much broader smile and a better result. Where do you stand in this yeah. photo? Pardon me? Where do you stand in this photo? 12 o'clock or where do you stand in this photo? It's, was that, what is that, 3 o'clock, I guess? Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be, if you're right-handed, if you're a, a, a dentist that's right-handed, I'd be pretty much where you would sit. Okay, so, but you're holding the camera basically on the sixth position. Right. Sixth oh, the, position. the camera. Yeah, right. the camera shoots. I thought somewhere. you meant the body, right. Yeah, you're standing in front of the patient. Yes. And, and the camera's in the six o'clock position. Again, you want to see as much as of the um, posterior as possible. Yes. Um, you want to see the anterior teeth, you want to see the posterior teeth, and you need to, it's a good example, you want to get the, the, yes. the tongue out of the picture. Yeah, exactly. Especially a large tongue. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes if it does cover the teeth, have the patient just very much relax and put the tip of the tongue at the top of their palate. Mm -hmm. And with the mirror, you can retract the tongue back, okay, so it wouldn't be in the picture. And you don't want it to be covering the teeth. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you would want to look for. And again, heat up your mirrors. Heat up your mirrors. Got to heat them up. You're going to be <laughs> taking a picture of uh, fog, you know. Take a picture of the fog. Happens exactly. Today. Speaking of mirrors again, when we yes. want to take um, the left buckle okay. corridor, um, yes. and many, many doctors, they have difficulties with capturing this photo because they're trying to retract so much, but they're not using a mirror. So they're not capturing something like this. It's a really nice photo, and this is taken with a mirror. Basically, in, in, insert, insert the, uh, the buckle mirror. Don't push it too far back because uh, it'll cause some pain back there. So you just have it go into the cheek, uh, retract back. Uh, you have the patient open when you're doing that. Have them bite together, as you can see there. You want the line of occlusion to be uh, horizontal, as you can see. And you want to have a line of occlusion in the middle of the photo. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the ideal. Yeah. Very good. See as much tissue as possible. Yes. Um, and you are focusing basically on the lateral. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. You do the same thing with the right? Yep, correct. Um, um, you put the mirror in? 